A picture, it is said, is worth a thousand words. If that's true, then this photographer's gallery must have at least a few million words to say about one of America's most beloved tourist destinations. That city is Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and the man who was behind the camera to chronicle so much of the area's vibrant past is Jack Thompson. His body of work is so closely intertwined with the history of this popular vacation resort that it's no exaggeration to call Jack Thompson Mr. Myrtle Beach. Someone asked me a few days ago, Jack, how many pictures have you taken? I finally found the answer. I went out on the beach one night, one dark and starry night, and I looked up and I said, that's how many pictures I've taken. The son of a newspaper man, Jack Thompson was born and raised in Greenville, South Carolina, in the Blue Ridge Foothills region, popularly known as the Upstate. It was at a Greenville pool hall in 1951 that the then 13-year-old Jack and two young friends overheard some older fellas gabbing about a magical place called Myrtle Beach. All the girls in Myrtle Beach wore bathing suits and you could drink beer and you could dance the jitterbug. We thought that was really exciting, so we decided that we had to come to Myrtle Beach. We had to go see what that was all about. The next day, Jack and his two friends headed out to do a little hitchhiking, gaining a few miles at a time, riding with pigs and chickens in farmer's pickups. It took the boys a day and a half to reach Myrtle Beach. Once there, his two friends, Freddie Collins and Carol Campbell, headed straight to the beach. Jack stopped by a souvenir photo stand at the pavilion, where he spotted a pretty girl posing on a crescent moon cutout. He approached the man running the photo booth. I said, hey, do you need any help? He said, well, when can you start? I said, well, if I could get a milkshake, a hamburger, I, I'll start right now. So it was that within minutes of arriving in Myrtle Beach, Jack Thompson had begun a career that would, over the years, make him a local legend. Little did I know fate had a hand on Jack Thompson to become a photographer. And with that first day in Myrtle Beach, I became a photographer. My, my fate was sealed. The day after Jack arrived in Myrtle Beach, his parents sent his big brother Joe to drag him back home to Greenville. That didn't quite work out as planned. The lure of the sand and surf soon won over the elder Thompson brother. He came up that night with his arm around a beautiful girl. Guess what he said? I ain't going home. <laughs> and I said, well, if you're not going, I'm not going. the two brothers managed to talk their parents into allowing them to stay and go to school in Myrtle Beach with local photographer and businessman Dwight Skip Lamb as their legal guardian and employer. In 1957, Jack graduated from Myrtle Beach High School with honors, and just two years later, he opened his own small photography studio. Jack was now on his way, doing portrait work taking yearbook photos at local high schools, covering tourism events for the Chamber of Commerce. When Hurricane Hazel ravaged the coast in 1954, Jack's camera was one of the few on scene to document the damage. But his true specialty became chronicling the homespun charm of the most popular 50s and 60s era Myrtle Beach landmarks. Diners, bait shops, amusement parks found themselves the targets of Jack's talented eye. Over time, Jack became more than just a photographer. He was now Myrtle Beach's unofficial historian. Hearing the words of his father, Greenville News editor Jimmy Thompson, in his ear. He said, son, history is so important 
make sure that you record it any way you can, write it all down. Little did I know it would be with a camera in my hand to go out and photograph just about everything that I thought may be important in history. One prominent landmark of early Myrtle Beach was the upscale Ocean Forest Hotel, the premier lodging resort on the South Carolina coast. Opened in 1930, designed by the same architect who created New York's Rockefeller Center, the magnificent Ocean Forest was a point of local pride, considered by many to be the finest resort between New York and Miami. In the 1950s, the hotel's ornate ballroom often hosted elaborate galas and conventions, many of them utilizing the then teenage Jack Thompson as their photographer. But by the early 70s, rising maintenance expenses doomed the spectacular resort. The cost of keeping it open was deemed to be too high for its owners. On a Friday the 13th in 1974, the stately hotel was primed to be demolished. Jack had spent many days trying to find someone, anyone, who would stop it. Somebody had to recognize that this was a flagship destination, destined to be a, a historical monument to South Carolina's coast. But I could not get anyone to step up. The day of the implosion, I was on a sand dune scanning the horizon, looking for the governor or the president or somebody to recognize the mistake that was being made in the demolition of the Ocean Forest Hotel. The Ocean Forest was among the first of the town's noted structures to be demolished but it was far from the last, as tourists flocked to the Myrtle Beach area, enjoying its unique shops, eateries, and hotels, the area was in a constant mode of remaking itself. Over the decades, Jack's camera witnessed the demise of more than one local landmark. One summer's day in 2004, Jack was on his way to the post office when he noticed two bulldozers spewing black smoke heading straight for the old Myrtle Beach train depot building's owner at the time was a beverage distributor who had been using the former depot as an office and warehouse but no longer needed it. He had tried to sell the 1930s era building but couldn't find a buyer and thus had plans to tear it down. 30 years earlier Jack had not been successful in saving the Ocean Forest Hotel. He was determined this time would be different, that the treasured train depot would not fall victim to a pair of bulldozers. I jumped the curb, my car pulled between the two of them. I jumped up on the porch, raised my hands, and I said, you ain't tearing this building down. The heavy wrecking machines paused. That night, Jack appeared before the Myrtle Beach City Council, pleading for the city to take action to stop the planned destruction of the depot. I said, it's a diamond in the rough. It's a jewel in our midst. For past and future generations, we can't let that happen. You have to find a way to save it. The city pledged to purchase and save the depot if Jack would raise the money to restore it. He became chairman of the 12-person All Aboard Committee that raised more than $650,000 over the next four years to bring the historic building back to its former glory. And today, that depot is the most prominent flagship destination and probably the most utilized building in Myrtle Beach. And yes, we were successful in getting it added to the National Register of Historic Places. After a distinguished seven-decade career that has won him recognition from the state of South Carolina 
as the official chronicler of the Grand Strand after a lifetime's worth of accolades and awards, including an honorary doctorate of fine arts from Coastal Carolina University, Jack Thompson, photographer, historian, preservationist, is showing few signs of slowing down. Someone asked me about retirement and I said, you know, I never heard of that. Someone said, how long have you been working? I said, working? I've never worked a day in my life. <laughs> Over his lifetime, Jack has amassed a portfolio that today numbers, in his estimation, about 100,000 photographs. Only about half of them have ever been printed. The rest are negatives. He fears what could happen to that visual history of Myrtle Beach because he hasn't had time to organize them all and he wants to make sure they're preserved. But for the city that has long recognized Jack's contribution to its history, those photographs and the man who took them will not be easily forgotten. You ask me and I can remember just about any picture and I tell people a picture is worth a thousand words. And I know all of them. Great stories. There are many stories. Have you got all day? <laughs> <laughs>